For those who have not met me before, hi, I am Sam. I'm your plant collector in Melbourne. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are joining me back, thank you for coming back. What do we have for today's video? Today, I'm going to be sharing with you um, what I can only say is my experience throughout having PCM, my own rare plant store, um, and pretty much I've, I put a, on Instagram, I put up a post or a question saying, what would you like to know? And there were a lot of questions. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 31. I put up, what would you guys like to know in regards to my experience and what it's like to open up a rare plant store? So without further ado, let's get into the questions. There are a lot here. I probably won't go through all of them, but um, let's try and address all the really fun ones, shall we? We've got some really spicy ones, like some really intriguing questions. I will try to answer as best as I can. Um, and also to be very, very honest with y'all. So I've got a question from Sydney Alocasia Girl. How do you import, as in what quarantine, etc., is needed? So, I actually don't import. So There's a couple of ways that plants end up being in the store. So, I have things from my own personal collection that I propagate, I grow, I pot up, and then I sell. Um, I would say that there is actually not a large percentage of which I do that because I love my personal plants. I don't think I personally have a lot of space nor time to look after or put the care in the baby plants if that makes sense i have over let's say 200 plants in the store i've got my own personal collection at home that could be probably around the same maybe like 200 ish um i have plants at our actual home home and some of you may not know this but through PCM, I actually do plant maintenance. So I have a couple of businesses as well as some clients that when they go away, I look after their plants or I've got businesses that are around the area that I look after on a weekly basis. So I have probably in the thousands of how many plants I actually care for. Um, even there's a place down the road that is a non-for-profit and they have over 400 plants and I go in at least once or twice a week. So to say that I don't really have time for babying plants is an understatement. <laughs> and I've got Danny, Callum and Mon, all of the people that help me here at PCM, they totally know that I definitely need help on the looking after the plants portion um, because I'm running around like a crazy chook. So for those of you that um, wonder like what is it like to have your own business and plants let me tell you it's a difficult one <laughs> um, to go back I think I went on a bit of a tangent there no I don't import I either grow some myself I've got beautiful growers up north um, some from Sydney some from Queensland um, and they send me some beautiful beautiful plants so technically I do not import and the importing process especially in Australia is so strict um, that I don't think I will be dabbling into imports anytime soon. But I know a lot of people are. Ooh, were you concerned? Ooh, so Miss Amanda Moo, 84, were you concerned about the niche market and the location? So absolutely. So I, I started the business back in 2020. So I opened the business in September, 2020, but actually started doing online business, I think December, no, I know, December 2020. I opened up the Brunswick store in December 2021, and I moved um, in July, August of 2022. So my concerns are yes, because that the plant market, COVID, was outrageous. I don't think we will ever witness something like that in our lifetime again, where prices were just 
off its chops and through the roof. Um, but in saying that, I still think like the amount of people that are interested in beautiful tropical rarer plants is still is not necessarily as high as it was. I feel like I know a lot of people that were into the hobby have now kind of left the hobby after COVID. Customers and people coming up to me being like, Sam, are you sure you wanna do a rare plant store because the market is plummet, there's not as many people, are you sure? And in my head, I was like, yes, I'm concerned. But in saying that, it's kind of, um, filtered out the people that are doing it for ne necessarily the best reasons. So for example, when plants were thousands of dollars as much as a car, some people would get into it because of the materialistic value or the idea. Um, and I would like to think that those people have kind of exited and what is left are passionate, beautiful people that genuinely love the plant, not necessarily for their value, but because they're passionate about these beautiful plants. Concern, yes, but not big enough to stop me. And also the location wise, I knew I wanted Richmond because a lot of people, like when I was up north in North, um, in Brunswick, a lot of the customers or a lot of people that came to visit were actually down in Southeast. So I knew that I kind of wanted to be Northeast. -ish. And then there's also a really diverse um, socioeconomic just in Richmond and where we are at, if you ever come to visit PCM, there is just so much fun stuff. Like one side of Victoria Street is all just amazing Asian food and then the other side is more like a bit fancier, a bit more like furniture and um, things like that. So it's a very diverse street. It's pretty cool and I love being here. Ooh, okay. Do you ever burn out? So that is from the Tinker Garden. So to be completely honest with you, Yes, I didn't realize I was experiencing burnout until pretty much now. So I, I reckon from opening um, the store in Brunswick up until now, which has been pretty much a, a full year and maybe a month, is that I have been go, 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 go. And I feel like I've been putting so much foundation down that I haven't really had much of a break and it only occurred to me like leading up to Christmas is that I really need help because there is so much that needs to be done and that I need to do and having Callum, Danny and Mon and some of my other friends be able to help out has been a world of a difference and which is why I can start filming again I feel like I knew that I was leading up to burnout, but it's only now where I've gone camping. I fully rested. I'm now rested enough to know that a few months ago I was actually at burnout. So <laughs> it's the typical small business thing when you're trying to get things off the ground. Um, there's a part of me that is like, I need this to work and I want this in every part of my soul to work. So I'm willing to put the hard yards in. But I think one of my new year resolutions is for 2023 is to actually take more time to rest because the more creative, the more rested I, sorry, the other way around, the more rested that I feel, the more creative and the more excited I am. I get to play with PCM rather than I have to be at PCM, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, having your own business is definitely a huge challenge. It would be a disservice to me and you to say that it's easy and everyone should do it when in actual fact, it's really difficult. Like you are challenged on every facet of your being as well as you do so much legwork and there's always so much to do. Given I am so blessed, I love what I do and I wouldn't change it for the world, but Again, it is a lot of work. Then, 
Ooh, typical town home, favorite must-haves. Ooh, I think my favorite must-haves would have to be the tried and true, like you have to have a good nutrient or fertilizer. In other words, my, uh, the, this is also not sponsored. This is Foliage Focus from Growth Technology. For those of you that don't know, I am the proud ambassador for Growth Technology and that, that my friend, it is the golden liquid. It is the best thing that could happen to your plant. Um, but I'm sure a lot of you already know about it, so I won't go too much into detail. And I guess some really good tours or scissors. I've got these in the store. I have these little gold um, slash crystal scissors. They're super cute. They're sharp. Hold on. Is that in focus? Um, super cute, sharp, and these are a lifesaver. I literally use them every day when I'm in the store um, purely because I need to like cut off dead leaves and propagate and blah, blah, blah. So these, and they're so little that they can get through like, I don't know how to explain it. Like if, they, if your plant has a lot of leaves, it's easier to like snip and get to, to it. I don't know. These are just super cute and they're my go-to, must have. Um, some grow verticals is a also big mention. I highly, highly recommend them. This UPI is absolutely loving it. So it, I attached this like in December and it's given us some amazing, amazing leaves. So very, very happy. Another go-to. Um, Have you looked into growing more of your own to sell? Um, yes, it actually has occurred to me that it would be probably a good use of my time to actually grow my own stock. But again, it's just that I don't have enough space at the moment. Um, so I could probably think about it once this lease ends for Richmond and if I were to move and I had more space or if me and Jacob ended up getting a house with a big backyard and I could get a big greenhouse, I would probably, no, I would definitely be trying to grow my own stuff. Um, but at this point, it's not just feasible just yet. So that question was from Tully Webb. We love Tully. Um, so next one, we have more about importing plants into Australia. Unfortunately, I've already touched base on that and I do not import. Um, ooh, so Elizabeth from Plants, Fla Fla ooh, how do I pronounce that? Flanzen? Flanzen? <laughs> So our beautiful Elizabeth has asked, what's the hardest aspect of running a rare plant store? There are so many challenging things. Um, I'll try to keep it simple in that having any small business of your own is challenging in itself because you are always questioning something. And I can, I can sit here in conviction saying that this is right for me and this is the only thing that I want to do, but it doesn't stop that little voice in my head that always is like, are you sure that's the right choice? What will people think if you do this? Um, quite recently, I had a review pop up on the page and it was a very, um, it was negative feedback. Really, I've only ever had two or three negative feedback from people, not that I even, I don't even know them, to be honest. Like, I'm pretty sure one of them was a troll, but um, on YouTube comments, there is definitely, for me, a challenge is the negativity that comes from being public. And you can say like, oh, that doesn't faze me. But when I read a, some negative feedback comment with no, no, um, positive whatsoever it really does feel like it's um, a personal thing even though i know that i shouldn't necessarily take it personally i need to learn from it look at it objectively and not subjectively or personally but it is still one of my biggest challenges and 
Um, another one is because I get to see so many people and they're all so, so beautiful. I've got friends and family that are so, so supportive. I'm so lucky, but at the same time, you have to be really strong-minded because you have so many voices and so many people saying how you should do business um, when at the end of the day, it is your choice. So they might have the best intentions ever. Um, and I know this because I've had really close friends and family suggesting lots and lots of things for my business, for me, for PCM. Um, and you kind of just like have a constant thing um, of, is this right? Should I listen to them? Um, where does this opinion come from? Or do they have an ulterior made, uh, motive? And so, yeah, it is incredibly challenging. Another thing, which is a bit more lighthearted, <laughs> is that I hate pricing. It is so difficult for me because when I get plants, it's of course I need to look at the market, but it's also the margins of I get a plant for X amount of dollars and I have to, I can't sell it for the same or less, but if the market drops, anyway, there is just, I'm a small business and I need to um, do what I need to do, but sometimes it doesn't feel right or there's something in my gut that's just like, that doesn't feel quite right. Anyway, so I hate pricing. That is one of the biggest things. Um, what else is really challenging? My DMs. I have people now that are trying to help me sort out my DMs because your girl tries to avoid them like the plague. And it doesn't mean that I, want, I don't want to talk to you because I love you guys. I adore you guys. It's just that I almost get a bit of anxiety of like how many things that I have to do. So imagine like a to-do list and then it's like a hundred messages, 200 messages, 300 messages, 500 messages, 1000 messages. And it kind of just like accumulates. And even if I were to get some done, it's like they, once you reply, they reply again. So I have a constant battle with trying to keep up to date with my DMs. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of people know that if they know me in life, is that if you wanna try and get a hold of me, it's quite difficult. Um, hmm. Not a question, just wanted to say, I can't wait to visit PCM. And that's from Sage Foliage. Thank you, beautiful one. That is so lovely. Ooh, what advice would you give yourself if you went back in time to before you opened? Wow, that one's a really good one. So one of them would be to accept help. I feel like in Brunswick and even opening up Richmond, I had an overwhelming amount of help and love and support. And a lot of the time it felt icky for me to say yes to help. So I think if I sat myself down, I would say, Sam, you're opening up again, you're gonna need help, and you're gonna have to accept the love. Um, I'd also say, hey, my girl, you need to look, you need to be a boss ass lady and stand in your own conviction and despite what everyone else is saying or thinking that I need to come back to what PCM is about and what I want to express from PCM and be creative and think outside the box and not get too bogged down on the logistics and also what else what else would I say to myself just have fun keep playing keep creating and you're gonna be just fine <laughs> also why did you stop uh, i would also tell myself like why did you stop youtube huh why did you stop that you love that it's creative get back into that <laughs> that's what i would tell myself um how do you know which plants to order and quantity do you look at market trends still from sage foliage that's a great question i feel like it's a yes and a no so how do you know which plants to order so technically 
I go by things that I love. If I didn't love them, they wouldn't be in the store. Besides some begonia. I'm not a fan of begonia, yet they are in the store. But <laughs> um, I, working previously at Hello Houseplant, I kind of had an idea of what plants people liked. Um, and that was in the city and I'm not too far off from the city. So I guess I had like a bit of an idea of what does actually move. But at the same time, it's Richmond. It's somewhere different. So I would go to my suppliers. I would go to nurseries and I might pick a couple like one, two of this. I'll trial this. If they move, then I'm like, awesome. Then I will keep going back and grabbing those. And if they don't necessarily move, I know for next time, but maybe keep one or two of them in the store. Um, and quantity wise, again, I'd go off that if they don't really move, I would say I'd keep one or two in the store. Um, and if they do really well, I'll have maybe four or six of them in the store. It really, it just depends. Or even what's available, because even though I might have a certain level of stock that I would like to uphold, if they're not in season, if they're not at my growers or they run out, then it is what it is. Um, market trends, I don't, it's hard because as a collector, as a personal collector, I see trends and I like what I like. Um, I can't help but, but love anthurium and certain traits like variegation, deep dark plants, awesome backs, um, contrasts of veins and the leaf and velvetiness, like all these different things. So. I guess I, I do follow the trend, but I don't know if that's on purpose or it's just because Sam likes all the different trends personally. Um, I've got, do rare plants sell better for collection value or common ones due to their accessibility? Uh, ooh, I feel like common plants move a lot more. Um, especially when you have like people walking past and now that I've actually got foot traffic, um, I don't really get a lot of random people that love rare plants. I got a lot of random people that love indoor plants in general and more of the common stuff. But um, I would say people that find me common, but people that know me, they will always go for the rarer stuff. Is it possible to let some plants go or do you appreciate them while they are in? Oh, this is such a great question. It is yes and no. So, whenever I get a box of new fresh plants, there are mostly super sexy plants that I'm always tempted to be like, you can just go in Sam's collection. You, you, you can come home with me tonight. Um, but I've actually, tried really really hard to kind of separate PCM plants and SAM plants because I know that if there is any kind of blurred line <laughs> that PCM would uh, be a non-for-profit at that point and I'd just be like oh I'll take this and this and this and this and this so and I'm to be honest I have just started to going back into collecting but I'm very selective nowadays so it is super hard, especially if I get like a new shipment and I'm like, oh, that looks so sexy and there's only one of them. Um, but I try my hardest not to take them home with me. <laughs> um, and do I get sad when they leave the store? Not really. I think that um, PCM has always been uh, the idea of plant sharing or plant giving um, in exchange for like a feeling of joy and happiness. So I always wish the plant and the person well when they walk out the door because I'm like, they're gonna have a beautiful life and thank you for supporting me so that I can continue to do all of this. <laughs> um, Malcolm, milk my way. If I'm a plant noob, where should I go to see more info? Does PCM have an app? Ooh, no, I don't have an app yet, but I'm really keen to make an app. Uh, Malcolm, you can help me. Uh, 
where do I go? Like, where did I figure out all of my plant information? Um, how did I? I feel like all the information that I learned was through YouTube and watching Kaylee Allen and other like rarer plant people. Um, I didn't do much reading and then the rest of it was experience. So I would say start on YouTube. Just look up care things, watch amazing people and their amazing plants. Keep in mind that wherever that person is, um, their environment is different to yours. So you might have to tweak it a little bit, but I would say experience, um, but you can start off with YouTube. You can start off with, and also the internet is really confusing. I feel like if you, um, like Google a plant, some of the care instructions are quite the opposite. Like people will be like anthuriums, bright indirect light. And I'm sitting here like, I know from experience that bleaches the leaves. Uh, so they like lower to moderate to stay dark. Um, but yeah, that's a hard one. I'd say start on YouTube. Go look up Kaylee Ellen. And I have plants by Callum. He says, how much do you love Callum? <laughs> I love and adore you to no end, my dear. Um, how expensive roughly is it to launch a small business and what advice would you give to newbies? Ooh, juicy. So this one, to be honest with you, it's a really hard one because when I first started, I did a lot of it secondhand. So if you ever come into PCM and you see the shelves and this chair as well is secondhand, this fluffy, delightful, comfy chair. Um, there and I made the tables um, with the help of some people. So I would say that in my experience doing my first store in Brunswick and even here sometimes is that I've had a really small budget to start off with, but I guess it just depends on what you want and where you're at in life. Like I wasn't happy or willing to fork out a huge amount of money to see what would happen. I would rather have spent like a small amount, see where it goes and add on if I needed. Um, whew, I would say it's a lot. Like when you take into consideration rent every month, um, the deposit or the bond to get into a store, the plant stock, and not only just plants, because I'm assuming you don't also just want to sell plants. You also want to sell like um, products and nutrients and pots and all this other stuff. I mean, I even have, I've got artwork and candles and um, t-shirts and merch and all these things massively add up and that's not even taking into consideration like water, electricity. Um, I have the heater going on 24 seven so the plants stay warm because they're tropical and internet and what else? The list goes on and on. Furniture and soil and amendments, you know, like it all adds up and I'd probably, I don't want to put an exact figure to it because I know with what I started with to what I have now is a lot, is vastly different. I definitely wasn't the person that had a lot of cash, really high cash flow, um, and did everything that I wanted in terms of like fit out for the store. Um, I kind of been building it up and up and up with the money that I started with. So, I would say, look, if you wanted to do a small business and you wanted to do online, you literally only have to get an online website. But um, if you're wanting to do a store, um, I would say minimum 15 to 20K. And that is definitely on the more conservative side. More interesting things you've learned while opening. Ooh, what have I learned? Um, I've learned a lot actually, especially since moving from Richmond. I feel like it's been a whole different ball game. Um, I've had to really focus on budgeting and the books and finance. And I'm like, I was a science girl. How am I supposed to know anything to do with business? Um, so in terms of personal development and learning, I've learned so much about 
having my own store and making decisions um, my biggest challenge is probably budgeting and making sure that I don't buy too many plants because I see plants and I want plants and I want them in the store and I end up buying them so um, I think I've definitely the excitement um, is still there for sure but I have a lot more of a cap on nowadays being like do I need this um, what are the consequences? What are the pros for this? Um, can these stay alive? Do I have the space? Like, there's just so much more that I consider now in comparison to when I first started and, and I had the store and I would just be like, yeah, let's just grab these plants and we'll grab that too. Oh, cause I feel like it. It's a lot more um, directed. I still have so much to learn given, but I feel like I'm on the right path of how to run PCM and I guess one of the goals is to feel like whether I am here in the store or not that PCM is its own entity its own thing that it will be able to run with or without me that would be an amazing dream of mine um, and that way I could start to play and do creative things and um, to collaborate with amazing creators and do some really amazing things because PCM store is kind of just the beginning of my vision of what I want it to be and for it to get to my long-term goals and the amazing stuff I need to make sure that I'm not always in the store if that makes sense so that's that's 2023 for you um, also how do you think the rare plant scene in Australia varies to the UK or US scene we've seen on YouTube and online fascinating question this one I don't actually think that I can answer fully I don't think that I have a idea of it yet but I'd like to think that America and the UK particularly on YouTube have a big say on what is trending I feel like Australia is a bit behind in terms of all the rare stuff that we have um, of course we've got some really awesome stuff too don't get me wrong like the Anthurium Hines that thing's amazing um, and that is only in Australia because it's a cultivar so I think like everything in America I feel like we kind of look up to and we're like oh my god I want some of Doc Block stuff or Enid stuff and yada 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 so I think that we the tropical rare plant society community family we are a lot more linked than we thought and um, Melbourne has such a beautiful big community um, and even we know people from Sydney Queensland all these beautiful things I've even had people from Singapore come visit me here in PCM which has been so so cool and they're like I follow you on Instagram or I've watched your YouTube so it is crazy to me to think that how much we are actually connected for having like this very niche hobby but for the people that are in the hobby and that are really passionate about the hobby we are obsessive so we see we see what everything is happening in this world um, and what is out there I think um, and it's funny because in Australia I feel like every state has their own little like niche so for example I feel like the people that are in Melbourne or the people that I've hung out with a lot we are really into our anthurium um, but supposedly in I think in like Perth they're really into I feel like they're philodendrons um, and then some people um, was it also Perth or WA that really likes Syngonium? I can't remember, but it's almost like every state has their own genus that they really love or are into. Although let's be honest, I feel like everyone that is on YouTube is definitely like a Philo, Anthurium, Monstera kind of fan, kind of vibe. Um, and then people like Syngoniums, but let's be honest, majority of it is the Aracia family or Aroids. Rare plant stores in Australia, you are able to import plants. 
Uh, oh, um, I know that there's like two in my brain that do imports. Can't remember for the life of me. Um, but not to the UK or the US, I don't think. Anyway, there's a lot of questions about importing and I can't say that I know much about it. Um, I do have friends that have actually started the process of importing plants. Like for example, a friend did um, from Indonesia to here and that was one, really expensive and two, not a lot of success. So a lot of the plants ended up dying. So. I've had a lot of horror stories in terms of like importing um, and then I also have someone that has come into the store saying that they've also tried to import as well. Um, again, stressful. Not my vibe. Not yet anyway. PCM won't be importing anytime soon. <laughs> um, without being nosy, what's the investment? Even just a list of expenses. Oh, I feel like I already covered that one but that question was planted by Indy. Um, I've got a leafy boy, so my Danny boy, he says, why are you so messy? Because <laughs> I'm chaos, because I am a creative. I like to think that there's like two ends of the spectrum of like super clean, organized um, and straightforward. And then there is like chaos and creativity and like fun and loose. Um, and I definitely am more on the chaos creative side. Like. There are so many times when I come into the store, I cause havoc and I'm creating and I make a mess and then I'm like, you know what, I'll clean this later. And then Danny will come in and be like, you're so messy. <laughs> but um, even Callum, Callum says the same thing, but I'm very lucky to have those, in, those, um, those boys in my life because they clean up after me because they love me. What's the most difficult part of owning your own business and store? I've already answered that one, I feel. And how many plans do you have for sale at the, any time in the store? Hmm. I would say it's probably always around the 200 mark. If it's beyond full, maybe closer to 300. Um, but yeah, I like to keep the store very lush. So that, my friends, is the end of the Q&A, if you will, what it is like opening up my own or store, my business, or having a rare plant store. Um, yeah, to be honest with you, there is tremendous challenges to it. Um, but then at the same time, I have the highest of highs. So if there's anything that you can take away from this video is that if you are passionate about something, it doesn't even have to be about plants, but if you are passionate about something, um, you just don't know where you'll end up. And I feel like I, I feel like I tell this story all the time, but it's so true in that the world, you might think that you're going in one direction. I wanted to do science and be a doctor um, and realizing that wasn't actually my dream and how the world works and the funniness of, even though I'm going down one path that I think that I would really love to do and then life is like, nope, this is actually what you're meant to do. So just have an open mind. If you were like me back in the day where you're just like, why is life or why is my career or relationship or something is not sticking, um, to have faith that you can only connect the dots backwards. And that is one of my favorite, favorite lines that I learned in high school. Um, and I vouch for it even today because I am living my dream and it is only because there are certain people and certain things that have happened in my life that have connected these dots. So thank you. And one of these people are you. So thank you so, so much for being with me, for watching this video, for supporting me, my dreams. For those of you that have been here for a while, my heart is just so full and thankful for you. Without a lot of your support, this couldn't happen. So. I am eternally grateful for you. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Hopefully it gave you an insight to my world, to what it's, what it's like to have my own store. I'll probably be doing a tour at some point because some of you will not be able to see what it looks like. Um, but until next time, guys, I will see you in my next video. Mwah.